it's pretty cool to see all of you and be like, this is a fucking proof of work. Y'all be good looking and healthy. And it's real. Um, and I wonder what it takes for this next generation of companies to be more real. Because I don't think it's as simple as wanting to be more real. It's hard. It's painful. It's easy to be misunderstood. There's a lot of incentives acting the other way. Stock prices, investors trying to get rich quick. People join you and your idealistic company because they believe in the ideals. It's a little bit different when you got a mortgage. Uh-oh. And um, I think there needs to be a greater humility around how fucking hard it is to be real, how vulnerable, how painful, how difficult. And um, I think the hope is through finding others who also are seekers of truth, want to do the hard stuff, have the proof of work, you can hopefully build new collectives, new collaborations, new cooperations with those of us who are a little more real, they're trying to be a little more real every day. And these companies, these efforts, they're just not going to succeed if it's trying to do it on your own. It's got to be a collaboration. And so if proof of work, people showing evidence of who they really are, they've shown they can put the work in, they've done the stuff. I think that's how you build a new society, something at its core that's not fake. You can meet a stranger and you can still know, whoa. So I've done push-ups every single day for the last five years. That's unfakeable. They care about health. They care about their health. If somebody every week has called a random friend and just said hi in a time of need, even when it's good, that's proof of work. That person's a good friend. And I think the company I founded, Daylight, is just trying to be one of the companies in this new wave of just trying to be a little more real. And I think there's a lot of ways to describe what we're doing, but my favorite one is just trying to be real, trying to be real with technology, trying to be real, real with health, and just trying to be real with customers. I hate the word consumer. It's like disempowering. And uh, in the world we're moving into, where things are more real, I think the possibility is what a consumer really is, is somebody voting with their dollar. And there hasn't been a new computer company since Oculus. And I don't know if you guys want to put a screen on your face for the rest of your life, but that's not my vision of the future. And um, it's just really hard. It's just really hard. And if there aren't enough people to vote with their dollars, this isn't going to exist. And so it's really, I've been working on this for six years. Um, I should probably say what it is, but it's a blue light free computer. Um, we invented a new uh, display technology and we're building a whole set of products around it. And uh, yeah, it's just really hard. And there's very few examples of companies who are able to succeed so, why you build it? Um, <laughs> I needed hope. Why? I'm super ADHD. <laughs> uh, why are you super ADHD? Because I didn't find Uncle Jack early enough. <laughs>
what he just said. <laughs> Yeah, I just, it, I needed some hope. I'm super ADHD. Uh, I have really bad seasonal affective disorder. I become incredibly depressed in the winters. Um, my vitamin D levels are really low. Uh, I've struggled with a lot of mental health over the last dozen years. And um, they thought I have glaucoma because my ocular pressures are so high. Just I've been on a computer all day and the strain. And um, yeah, it was just, I felt I had some potential, some capability, but gosh, I just wasn't able to realize it. And um, it just helped me to be like, maybe a lot of this is caused by my computer. Maybe this is a, a lot of this is caused by my environment. Because um, I was on a plane, and uh, before I knew it, I was like, wait, I just read Tolstoy for six hours. I've been trying to read this book for nine months. I'm not smarter. I'm not more disciplined. The only thing that changed is the environment. And that was kind of the insight is like, maybe all of us can be a better version of ourselves if the things around us knew what our goals were, knew what our values were, and were aligned and supported us in that. And so that's the hope here with Daylight. Um, maybe some of you are gonna be able to see it. We have a couple of people going around, but it's a, it's a blue light free computer that you can use in the sun. Um, it's flicker free at nighttime. Um, it has an amber mode where it's, uh, it looks like it's a spectrum that's close to what a campfire is. So the hope is a healthier, more humane computer um, that can help you build a better foundation for your life. And um, we're starting with a tablet. We're launching in May. This is the first uh, public reveal and event, so this is kind of cool. And um, the hope is if this works out, um, we can build a phone, a healthier, less distracting phone. Not just light, but EMFs, ergonomics, distraction, addiction. Um, the power of doing your own hardware is you get to control the operating system. And uh, as AI keeps getting better and better, it gets easier and easier to make software. The software starts to look closer to philosophy. It's really all just about what choices you make. And so the questions that motivate us are, what's the base defaults of an operating system that sets you up for better habits, for better health, more meditation, less calories. How can it be different? How can we not just assume people want something that is colorful and shiny and sex appeal? How do we empower people? You know, even if it's one more click or it's a little more boring. And so the hope is we can kind of be decentralized Apple um, for this generation. Who knows? But we'll try. And uh, I think I covered the three points I said I would. So thanks for your attention. Oh, and I'm still learning the entrepreneur thing, but if you want to be one of the first to order it, go to health.daylightcomputer.com. Congratulations.